Hello. I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our hearts are open to learn, to learn your ways, that we will be blessed, and that we will walk perfectly before you. Thank you for our daily bread today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Wow, yesterday I was talking to you about you know, how, how Jesus fed the multitude. And, and you see, what, what got my attention was when Jesus said, you need not send them away. We can give them food here and now. And that's how God thinks. And I told you, Elijah did the same, Elisha did the same thing. See, he had, he had 400 men in his house and a few loaves. And I was explaining something to you, I remember that now. That the man brought his first fruit and it was loaves of bread, not wheat. Loaves of bread. See, so learn from that. So stop all those arguments that uh, in the Bible they tied with animals and, and no. Finished products. They, they gave their tithe from finished products. And also, if they gave their tithe from finished products, they could even give their tithe with money. Anyway, that's, that's not, I'll talk to you about Titan later. <clears throat> so, this man, Elijah told his servant, save everybody. I said, sir, it won't go around. I said, what do you mean? He said, save everybody. For thus says the Lord, they will eat and it will remain. And that was exactly what happened. They ate and there were leftovers. So, the same thing happened in Jesus' ministry. They ate and 12 baskets, think about it, 12 men went seven and came back with 12 baskets. See? Now how did they come about with, how did they come, with, come back with 12 baskets? Because, you know, people ate so much that they, they must, I don't know if they kept some to take home, but they ate so much that they didn't know where to keep the remaining one. And Jesus didn't want the place to be dirty. So Jesus looked at the whole and said, okay, you know what? Gather out the fragments. So, so they, they went and said, oh, you don't want any again? You're, you're full? Yeah, I'm full. Please, um, I, okay, we can put it here. And then that's how they were going around, you know, in 50s, remember? They were going around and then 50 men dropping their stuff in the basket. And then they got 12 baskets full of leftovers. Why? Because Jesus acknowledged the Lord in that situation. So I was saying this, 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 this man in Luke chapter 12, he didn't acknowledge the Lord. And I said that is why God brought about tight now, what is Titan for? What did Melchizedek teach Abraham? Melchizedek taught Abraham that, look, listen, when it comes to dealing with God and mammon, you must acknowledge and honor the Lord first. Whatever you get, you must honor the Lord first. Now, what do you mean honor the Lord first? See, he told them in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Now, how do you remember the Lord your God? Oh, I remember God. It's God I've given me this, this money. That's not what it means. You know, you just, that's, that's, that's the problem with a lot of people. Because you see the word, remember the Lord your God. So you just think, mm, I remember. Lord, we remember. You know, let's pray. Turn it to prayer. Father, we remember you. Father, we remember you. Uh -huh. No, no, that's not what it means. How do you remember the Lord? Remember to honor the Lord. How do you honor the Lord? You recognize that God has blessed you. And so you take out a portion for him. And Melchizedek taught Abraham that a tent is enough. 
You know, I find people who say, eh, eh, why, why should you be talking about 10% when God owns everything? Hey, don't be overzealous with God. <laughs> you know, you know, it's so funny. It's only saying, nah, nah, no, no. Why, why, why are we talking 10%? Me, I'm doing 20%. Me, I'm doing 30%. Me, I'm doing 100%. Fine. But God, who taught Abraham, a tent is what he asked for. You know why he asked for a tent? Because he's not hungry. He's not looking for your money. Hey, you need to get this into your mind. God never wants your money. He said it. He said, if I was hungry, will I tell you? So we, we paint this picture sometimes that, you know, now... This started when the argument of tithing came about. So someone said, uh, uh, we don't have to, uh, why are we, why are we, you know, because people think. Oh. You see, wrong teaching is wicked. You see, the devil is wicked. He gets, you see, you see what he does? He gets your mind twisted. So twisted that even when you're trying to um, straighten things out, you're still straightening them out in darkness. You know what that means? You know, you, you're doing something. You're not sure of what you're doing. And then someone say, hey, what I do? Okay, I change it. I change it. I change it. And then you change it to something wrong also. So, so, like I've, I've, I've always said, how many of you, how many believers, how many pastors have gone before the Lord? Take time to fast and pray even. I say, Lord, this, this issue about tithing, can, can you educate me? I need to learn from you. Why did you tell them to do it? And what, what is the import of this thing right now? How many? How many are saying they are teaching on tithing? They thus says the Lord. <clears throat> but that's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I heard from the Lord, not what I heard from a preacher, not what I read from a book, not even what I read from the Bible. But the confirmations are all there in the Bible. So, so the Lord taught Abraham, say, look, whenever you get now, previously Abraham has been blessed. At this point, he was a rich man. You remember, he went to Egypt, he came out with great substance. He went to, to Abimelech, he came out with great substance. And now he, he went for this war, and then he's on his way. Melchizedek met and said, Abraham, hey, watch. Okay? Because when you get spoils like that, it's yours. It's yours. So, so you remember when Abraham met the king of Sodom, the king said, you know what, Abraham, take everything. Just give us our wife and our children. That's the right thing to do. So the king wasn't giving Abraham any special favor. That was just the right thing to do because they were in the spoils of war for Abraham. But you see, Abraham met Melchizedek, and Melchizedek taught him, this is what you must begin to do from now. Say, yes, sir. Every blessing you get, you honor the Lord first with it. Yes, how do I honor the Lord? Say, you take a tent, and this is what you do with it. Now, the secret is this. When you honor the Lord first, you know what you're doing? You are acknowledging him in that blessing. Now, this is what this man did not do. Because when you acknowledge him, wow, Father. You see, that's why he says you should do it first. First. Ah. May God bring light to his children. You are honoring the Lord. How are you honoring the Lord? You are spending the first. That's why God said take a tent. Tent. He's not asking you for everything. So you take out a tent. That's the first thing. Don't forget this part. It's the first thing you must do. Oh, so I didn't receive cash. So yes. Even if you didn't receive cash, the first, the, see, the first touching of that money 
must be because of the Lord. That is the idea of tithing. Not to give money to church or to give money to somebody. Why? See, when you do that, God was teaching Abraham and his children because the Abraham practiced it enough. Think about it. Abraham learned about tithing. The Bible did not tell us that Melchizedek met um, Jacob. But we find Jacob talking, referring to tithing. Now, what does that tell you? Simple logic. Abraham had tithed enough, it had become a family tradition. So you take out that first and say, Lord, thank you. I recognize this particular blessing came from you, Lord. And I just want to honor you with it. Now, what I do, you are honoring the Lord with it. You are acknowledging the Lord with it. What happens next? In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what will he do? He will direct your paths. He will direct your path. What do you mean direct your path? He is the one that will now tell you what the money is for. Oh, you don't know. You, oh, you don't know. You don't know this. He will now tell his son, that money is for this. Oh! You, you know, you know, oh, I, I pray you understand this thing and begin to walk in it. Now you just got your salary, for example, or you just got, did some business and, and got the profit. And you are, oh, thank you, they paid that money. Oh, oh, let me, let me, let me honor the Lord first. So I'm like, Lord, thank you. you you've blessed me. So I'm, I'm taking out my tithe and I'm giving it to you. You know, I've taught you this severally. It's his money. It's not the church money. It's not any man of God's money. It's his money. So, Lord, what do you want me to do with this money? And then he'll tell you, this is what I want you to do with this money. Now, the, see, when he tells you that, and you form a habit of this, you, you're going to begin to experience. You just get, got your salary, and then the Lord said, hey, son, he's, he does this. He does it. He says, son, that money that just you just got is for you. Go get a car for yourself. Say, God can tell me to go. Yes. And then you're like, but, but, but this money cannot buy a car. Now, that is where faith comes in. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, listen, listen. <laughs> How much is your salary, for example? Your salary is 100,000. Yes. So you receive the 100,000 for, 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 for this month, for example. And then you take out the tithe and you say, Lord, I just want to honor you. And, 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 and Lord, thank you. Why you're praising him and praising him? And then because you have honored him, you have acknowledged him, he will direct your path on what to do with the remaining 90,000. And then the Lord says, son, I want you to get a new car. <sighs> okay. I, I don't have money to buy a new car. Now you are speaking from the place of ignorance and no faith. The one who knows, that's why I'm educating you now. The one who knows, you don't have any money. In fact, you were just waiting for them to pay you your salary because, I mean, you, you finished everything. And, and then here you are. You, you've gotten the money and then you're like, Lord, thank you. And then you, you take out the tithe and you're honoring the Lord. And then the Lord says, hey, son, go buy a car. Go buy a car. If you are smart spiritually, you are not going to start thinking, how much will a car cost? A car should be in millions. And I, I have, how much? 90,000 left. I have not talked about feeding. I have not talked about how I'm going to go to work this month. And God is saying I should buy a car. From where? Hey, he will never tell you to go buy a car with your sweat. When he says, it's time to buy a car, what should I do? Thank you, sir. And then you go to a car shop immediately. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I, I want to get a car. And then before then, you know, the, the, the car would have been in your heart. The desire, he would already, already have put the desire in you. And then you go there, you just be looking around and look. Oh, I, I had this beautiful testimony. <laughs> so God, God had spoken to this young man. He said, go, go, go get a car. He didn't have the money. So he went to this car dealership and then he was there and looking around and said, oh, I like this one. I like this one. 
My time is up. <laughs> Praise God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, sometimes the word of God, I'm going to tell you the story tomorrow. It's an interesting story you need to hear. Praise God. Oh, Father, we bless you. You are good. You are good. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.